Hello everybody, hope you're all doing well. Thank you very much for tuning into today's episode. Got something a little bit fun, a little bit exciting for you that I'm really looking forward to sharing. So if you haven't already, please make sure to like and subscribe and all that good stuff. But other than that, let's jump into the main topic for today's video, shall we? So this is what we're going to be talking about. This is my new Shell Dweller Aquarium that we're going to have in the shop here for, on display for you guys. I literally just finished setting it up today, so um, yeah, this is it basically. It's going to be sitting here right next to the big Mbuna tank, so there's the Mbunas up here. And then the Shell Dweller tank right here. So there's a few things that we're going to do. I'm just going to firstly run through the kind of specs and all that kind of thing of the tank. Um, but then, yeah, we'll go with go from there and maybe some other things that we can maybe discuss um, in terms of like my choice of shell dweller and everything like that. So this aquarium measures 75 centimeters by 25 centimeters by 25 centimeters. So this is like the classic kind of bookshelf type aquarium. Um, this is actually a bookshelf that we got here. I don't know what I'm going to do. I might put the books, some of the books on it, or I might just put the art that I have behind me. Um, that'll show you in a bit, but haven't 100% decided there. So it's about 40 litres, about 10 gallons more or less. But it is a great 10 gallon size because it has a lot of footprint and a lot of room for the fish to kind of play around with. Um, what I've done in terms of my aquascape is I've tried to create sort of three different areas. So there's like this area down the side here. There's like this central kind of area that's a bit closed in. And then there's this open kind of area here, plus these plants in the back. So hopefully that'll, if we have mo end up having multiple males in here, that's going to like I'll let them have their different spaces to kind of calm down and do their own thing without getting in each other's grill. Although I will be taking, good, taking a good look at it, I guess. In terms of hardware, we have full filtration. We've just got one of these, an AquaClear 20. I know this is a bit overkill, but it does the job and I had it lying around. I am going to put a bunch of pothos or something in the top here, and um, this media isn't cycled, so I'll get some cycled media and change it out, but right now I'm just leaving it there to settle um, and let everything settle, so yeah, that's it there. I really like the AquaClears and the Seachem um, hang-on filters, but as we discussed in the previous video, hang-on's not really a thing in New Zealand. So, if it wasn't for this, I'd probably be doing... Actually, I have no idea what I'd be doing. Maybe a sponge filter. Um, it's probably too small to really bother about a canister. Maybe I'd try plumbing a little sump. Um, that could be kind of fun, like have a sump down there. But, hey, we don't have to worry about it. Job sorted. Um, in terms of heater, I've got a heater back there. That's just one of the Eheim... Which one is it? I think that's the Eheim 50 watt thermo control. Um, that's good. That's, Eheim's probably my favorite type of heater. Um, but yeah, that, that's a good one that will keep everything under control and I won't have to think about basically. In terms of lighting, we've got this one that gives that weird flash that Tom, if you're watching, can uh, has told me why it does that before and I don't really understand it, but it doesn't do that in person. It's just like on camera, something to do with the frame rates or something, but that that's a good one. So I can show you there's like different options. Whoops. So obviously off is an option. Then this like real blue kind of misty I, I really like this it looks real like kind of mystical almost um then there's this one which is like very daytime looking um and then there's this one which is like the whole shebang i don't know which one we're going to go with i'm probably going to just change it up as we go but yeah i quite like it in terms of stocking for this aquarium i'm going to be doing the neolamprologus brevis um so in new zealand we can only get the brevis or the gold oscillatus um, there's no Maltese or Similis or anything like that. But the Brevis are very calm, very peaceful, and I think they're going to suit this tank well. I wouldn't want to put Aussies in here, the Gold Ocelatus, because it's just too small at the end of the day. It is just too small. Um, so I can show you the actual specific fish that are going to go in. So these Brevis in here are going to... They're those ones in the, in the middle there, not the ones with the black stripes, the other ones. Those guys are going to go in because basically they're in with the dual little chromistic feldi who are breeding and they don't seem to really like the brevis being in here. So they will be getting scooted across. Um, on this side we have uh, another Neolampologus brevis pair in there. Plus there's like heaps of these little fry floating around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the fry 
and move this tank and I don't know where I'm going to put it but I'm going to like breed brevis and breed them and then take them out when they get big enough and chuck them in here until we get a good enough colony going and then I'll be selling brevis. Um, we do sell brevis already but it would be more fun for me to breed them myself because I just love shell dwellers. If anyone knows me they know I am a shell dweller guy. But yeah, they'll be a fantastic fish. I'm not going to put any... Oh, I might chuck some ramshorn snails in, but I'm not going to chuck any other fish or anything in there. Uh, just for the simple reason that I love brevis too much. It's probably a bit small, really, to be wanting to mix stuff. Um, anyway, even if I did want to chuck something in, there's probably not much. Um, maybe Danios or platies or something would be alright, but... Nah, we'll just keep it as a brevis colony. Yeah, I really don't know why it does that flashing thing. That's annoying. But yeah, we're going to be keeping the brevis in there. Sorry, I just have to sit down in my bucket. Um, but in terms of planting, as you can see here, we've got a bunch of java fern on these coral rocks. We have the broadleaf and the narrow leaf option. No, what, what would you call them? Types, species? I don't know. Broadleaf and narrow leaf. I'm probably going to plant some more on it, but not yet. Um, but yeah, I, I, I kind of want these two rocks to just be kind of like a, a mountain, like a. I don't know how to explain, but like a, a jungle and a mountain, um, you know, like mountains covered with trees and that. And then this side, I kind of want to be a bit of a field. Um, so we got the Cryptocorini uh, crispulata, which these are the same ones that came originally from that Tropica, tro first Tropica lot that we got in New Zealand. I bought them and chucked them in here. No, chucked them in a different tank and they've been through a few tanks, but they're going to stay in here. Um, this one has a root tab in the bottom at the back, which... I probably, re I'd put it in and I realized, oh, I probably should have shown people that, but it's gone, you can't see it, but there is root tabs in there. Um, so yeah, and then we've obviously got the shells, the escargot shells. I get them from a, actually it's funny, I buy them from a wine wholesaler. I'm not entirely sure if they sell direct to the public, but I buy them from a wine wholesaler who sells them to like, wine to like restaurants and stuff. It's like a French wine place, but obviously they sell some escargot shells. They actually sell escargot, like normal escargot, so like, if you're into that, you can buy it from there. But otherwise, yeah, I buy just buy the empty snail shells. I think it comes in like a 60 pack or something for like 30 bucks maybe. Um, wait, that might be a lie. It might only be a 40 pack. I don't know. They sell them. Look it up. Um, otherwise, it's not too hard. Just look up escargot shells. If you're in America, I think you, it's much easier to get them on like um, big online retailers like Amazon and stuff. But yeah, that's basically it. There's no fish in here right now. But they will be going in. Um, I'm gonna let this. I'll probably do a few water changes to get all this dustiness water changed out. Chuck some actual filter media in there. I might adjust these rocks and stuff. But I will record putting the fish in. That might be Friday. So today, what's today? Wednesday. Yeah, it might be Friday that they go in. But we'll see how we go. I'm in no rush, obviously. Um, I might chuck some some snails in today. Um, but yeah, we'll see how we go. So that's kind of my, my new tank. You're, it's obviously set up now, so you're all welcome to come see it now. Um, so even look, there's like a little Godric's Hollow kind of thing. Um, I can't remember, believe I said that. That's weird. Not even true. But yeah, there's a little house in there. Um, so yeah, that's basically my new tank. You're welcome to see it. Otherwise, I'll keep you guys in the loop with it. Um, but yeah, my new Shell Dweller tank. So yeah, oh, this is the art, by the way, that I was talking about, the CC's art, so I'll check that in the cabinet below after. But yeah, thank you guys very much for watching, I really appreciate it. If you haven't already, please make sure to like and subscribe and all that good stuff. Um, we do have our new podcast feed that is going to be partially audios from the YouTube, but there's going to be other stuff on there as well, um, kind of just musings of a fish keeper, shall we say. So yeah, jump across and, and subscribe to that. But otherwise, thank you guys very much for watching, I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, I'll catch you in the next one. See ya. Bye.